welcome to the Coach Tyler Show. Hi and welcome to another episode of the Coach Kayo Show. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you again. It's a pleasure to be here with you again. Looking forward for um, this opportunity to share with you. Um, I hope you, first of all, I hope you can you can hear me well wherever you are. I hope you can see me well um, wherever you are if you can't. Um, please use the Facebook uh, and let me know. But as oftentimes I would say, great is he that is in us more so more so than than ever. Great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If you have not been here with us before, um, I'm your host, Coyote um, McKinnon. Remember this show, we talk all things soccer. Um, but more importantly, the ultimate objective here is to impact and inspire our young people. Um, that is our focus. And along the way, if we can touch the hearts and lives of other people, um, it's a blessing. But our ultimate goal is to, is to impact um, and inspire our young people to live out their purpose, especially in these very uncertain times. Um, they will truly need to lean on purpose to be able to navigate through these circumstances. Um, please do share this live. Um, get your, your teammates, get your friends involved. Um, even get your parents. There might be something in this podcast or in this live show that might inspire you since it's our goal and it's our objective. You don't want to miss it. But as we promised last week, we want to keep you up to date with what is happening within the SAC environment, especially um, our young ladies and what they're doing um, to move the game forward, uh, how they are now fully committing themselves to helping the game of soccer to grow um, from the Caribbean to North America, Central America. It's important that we all show the support because if you're a lover of the game, you cannot, you cannot separate it. You love the game, you love the game, regardless of who is playing the game. So as promised, Coach O'War will... Uh, share with you some scores and stats on what is happening within the U20 uh, World Cup qualifiers. So stay tuned as he brings to you some information that might be helpful for our young ladies that are in, aspiring to be at that level to have a good sense of what is happening there and are you um, committed to being there yourself. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all athletes. I would like to say thank you. And let's get straight into the CONCACAF women's under 20 results thus far. All right? Start off with Group E, leading the Group U.S. with six points, 13 goals for, zero goals against. In second place, we have the Dominican Republic with three points thus far, four goals for, four goals against. In third place, we have Puerto Rico. With three points, three goals for, eight goals against. And then rounding off at the bottom of the table, we have Nicaragua with zero points, one goal for, nine goals against. Next, we have Group F. Leading at the top of the table, we have Mexico with three points, three points, strong three points, three point, three goals for, zero goals against. In second place, we have Guyana with three points. Two goals for, zero goals against. In third place, we got Honduras with zero points, 
zero goals for, two goals against. And then we have Panama with zero points, zero goals for, three goals against. In Group G, we have Canada at the top of the table with six points, 11 goals for, zero goals against. In second place, we have El Salvador with three points, three goals for, four goals against. In third place, we have St. Kitts and Nevis with three points, seven goals for, nine goals against. And then at the bottom of the table, we have Trinidad and Tobago with zero points, two goals for, 10 goals against. And then we have group H with Haiti at the top of the table with three points, two goals for, one goal against. We have Guatemala in second place with three points, one goal for, zero goal against. In third place, we got Cuba with zero points, one goal for, two goals against. And then at the bottom of the table, we have Jamaica with zero points, zero goals for, one goal against, All right? It's not an easy tournament thus far, but I want to highlight a couple couple of the talent and uh, teams that are out there. Let's start off with the U.S., right? Great start so far with two wins, grabbing all six points. We know the primary focus of the U-20 is to prepare the players for the senior national side. The U.S. team recently appeared in the 2018 FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in France, where they failed to qualify for the first time in the competition history. Having this in the back of their minds, I know these players are keen and focused to have a successful tournament. For example, the U.S. women's team faced Nicaragua 6-0 with a strong, strong win. Goals coming from Olivia Moltre, who plays for Portland Thorns FC, which is a pro team. We have Michelle Cooper, who plays for Duke University. And then we have Andrea Katata, I hope I'm saying her last name right, who plays for Stanford University, who just recently won an NCAA championship. Now, can you imagine with the players and this pedigree the U.S. have on their side? Of the, I know it's going to be a strong, strong tournament for them. But we can't just say U.S. is going to win this tournament and so no other team has a chance, right? We can't say that. It's not going to be easy, right? We got teams like Mexico, who's just a strong, has a strong football culture. We have Canada, who showed us, even at the junior and senior side, that they're a team to be reckoned with, with the historic 2020 Olympic game winning the gold medal. And then we have teams like Guyana, who show us that they can compete at this level, where we have Aubrey and Samantha Benfield, who scored the last two goals for their first match. So we see that this tournament is very, very exciting. I hope you guys are continuing to watch this tournament because there's a lot to learn. And we can see the up and coming players coming up who will be at the senior side sooner than later. All right. You can continue to for more, you can continue to see more sports. You can continue to look for more scores and stats on our next show at 8 p.m. Also, if you would like to sponsor this segment, you can see on the website in front of your screen and also the cash app. I would like to say thank you. I will see you again next week at 8 p.m. Coyote, McKinnon, and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable, and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts, and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon, and company. We care. Welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. You with your host Kayo Day here. Um, want to say hi and good night to those who are now joining us. Remember, this is the um, this is a show that we talk all things soccer. 
I see that Sonia is in. Good night, Sonia. Good to see that you're here. Please share the live. Make sure that you are introducing more young people to what we what we're trying to do here. Um, we're speaking on, in this from when we said earlier the four part series of where sock is going and you are not. Well, this is the final part. Um, and I hope that you could you can look back to have an idea if you were here with us all with all three parts and see if you can connect it to what we will speak on tonight. Um, it's a good idea. It's a it's a good way to establish where you are, where you stand in terms of where the game is going. And the game is not waiting on, on, on none of us. Um, a lot of times, as, as former players, as coaches who are coaching for 20, 30 years, sometimes we, we're stuck with, with what we know. We're stuck with what we believe, maybe because we have gotten a bit of success um, there. We felt we feel like you know this this is all, but the game is constantly moving. Um, that's why I believe we we have four plus two moments within the game because it's so fluent. It's, it's ebbs and flows. So if the game is moving in that direction, we must be ready. So it's very important, uh, a very important topic from my perspective, and hopefully you can benefit something through what is said um, tonight because that is our objective to 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 add value to be impactful to inspire our young people um, feel free though to share comments feel free to if you have a question um, based on on what we're talking about that we'll try to answer it to, to the best of our ability um, if you haven't if you have not done so yet please subscribe so that we continue to get this message out to our young people not just from a football position but from a life position uh, position because obviously uh, we see soccer and, and and wherever you live in football as life there's so much lessons to learn um, it's a place where you can build character it's a way it's a place where you can become more self-aware there's a place where you learn to overcome challenges. Um, and there's one of the things I was saying to one of our young athletes today, we are taught so many times to uh, to go around thing, to go around things or to be or to be careful. But I truly believe um, for us to truly get to where we want to get to, we must learn to overcome. We must learn to overcome things. We must learn to deal with challenges. We must be persistent. We must learn to immerse ourselves in whatever we're doing so we can have that DNA. We need to be overcomers because when we decide to overcome, then we find that there is, there, what we say is a deliverance. You become a new person. A lot of people don't allow you to go through. A lot of people want to stop the process. And in stopping the process, in getting between the process, uh, the um, you don't see where you can truly be. So be sure to know, be sure to know that what we're trying to do is it's not to be common, is not to be scripted in this show, but we're trying to be our authentic self. So as I give you a chance to Maybe get your pens and paper because we're talking about soccer. And I know there's, there's something in here that might uh, be able to move you in a different direction after tonight. So don't miss it because you don't you can't remember what was said. If you can grab something in this in this in this conversation, then you might want to have a pen and paper. Get your clo your phone close as possible so that you can be able to record what is needed. Uh, I want to say good night to Sean Pierce, all the way from Georgetown, Guyana, now living here. Um, 
former player, Santos. Thanks for being here. Please share the like. But we'll be right back to dive in into this um, very important topic. What makes KMS different? Um, first of all, we firmly believe KMSA, it's, um, it's purpose-driven. It's, it's not uh, money-driven. We are here to make sure that every single athlete has the opportunity to be intentional about their gifts. KMSA holds a high standard uh, regardless of uh, situations or circumstances that might limit us in terms of resources. We make sure that those resources that we have is maximized to its fullest potential. We create an environment where players must understand when they come in, um, the expectations and the standards are high, um, and you must uh, be intentional and you must immerse yourself uh, within the environment to optimize your performances. Welcome back to the Coach Kyle Show. Kyle Day here. Uh, my objective tonight is to, you know, raise your awareness, um, to raise your consciousness in terms of uh, not being left behind with perceptions when it relates to where the game is going. Um, and as sometimes sitting in sitting in this chair, you know, culture could make you think that you need to be careful. Um, you need to be careful with what you you say because oftentimes you can find yourself in this in this bucket of just being an entertainer. You have to entertain people, or you have to be a uh, you have to amuse people. You know, it's like there's you can't speak about nothing um, from a soccer perspective, intellectual, or be a leader. It's important to understand that. We, we all have a responsibility, and if we're gifted, and if we're talented um, with what God has blessed us with, we must use it to, to empower and inspire people. Last week, we spoke about um, the, the, the tactical side of uh, the tactical component, and we, we addressed the difference between uh, a problem solver and a decision maker. And we know, uh, as we learned last week, most players continue to be problem solvers uh, because based on the environment they're in, uh, there's not a, I don't think there's an intentional focus on helping our, our young people to develop. I think it's more about business. And for those who are intentionally trying to do so, they are faced with the problem with not having enough people that want to, to go in that direction. So they're oftentimes faced with this dilemma of if we don't do what everybody's expecting, then they will go down the road. So where's the winning in terms of the developmental aspect? And I say that with I say that with all confidence because as I mentioned last week, the recreation game is on the up and up. So if the recreation game is on the up and up, which is a way of uh, a more um, a more is a structured environment for this organized play, if that makes sense, is a structured environment for this organized play. So they have no uh, they have no business with the the principles and the ages and stages of development. Is a place uh, for activities. Is a place for social development if I may add. So if that part of the game is on the up and up, then you definitely not going where the game is going. Anyway, we as we we also said last week, we want to recognize our high performers, which we call the nudge of the day. Uh, we want to pay homage to people who are doing amazing things, 
people who are challenging the system, um, no matter which side of the fence you are, as long as you are standing up for right and you're showing a high level of character, we want to recognize you at KMSA. So take a look at the nudge of the week. unapologetically be the best version of yourself and be willing to show who you are and why you're different. A lot of people still try to fit in and fit a mold. So they're accepted. You should always just be the best version of yourself. Rumba Montali, Sporting Kansas City, Youth 17, Youth 19 head coach. Take a big nudge for standing up and being uh, and blazing the trail and recognizing that we, regardless of where we're coming from or, or what our beliefs are, we have a responsibility to stand on integrity. We must be able to show character and be able to encourage and to uh, and, you know give other people the opportunity to be who they're supposed to be. Rumba Montal. Very proud, very proud of that guy to be to be so brave, um, to be able to you know remove from the from the norms. You know sometimes we are we are marginalized uh, based on people's perspective, based on who they think we are. So I I I recognize and respect your ability to to articulate that in a way that it can encourage us and to help us not to endure things, but to enjoy. Because a lot of times it happened to people who are fully committed, who sleep, drink, um, think about soccer so deeply and want to really um, impact the lives of our, of our young people. But oftentimes they're not given the opportunity. So take a big take a big notch. So this week we want to move forward and deal with the technical aspect, the final the final part of this, um, this four-part series, uh, the technical aspect that we need to address. Um, and hopefully we can add some value to your lives after uh, this show. We want to deal with one component of that in which the game is going and you truly don't understand or you're not, okay? I hope we're ready. If you haven't invited your friend yet, please, please do so now. If you haven't shared this live, please do so now. That very important component is the how component. What is technique? When we, how do we define technique? Well, my understanding, technique is the ability to do something on a pose. Is the ability to do something on a pose when we talk about technique. Um, a lot of times people are confused with the difference between technique and skill. Again, technique is the ability to do something on a pose. So when you <laughs> when you're spending time with your trainers. Uh, they like to to give you homework, which which I'm totally against. What is homework? This is not school. Saka has nothing to do with school. They have no they have no connection. One solve problems. One create problem solvers. Saka is a game of skill where you have to make decisions. So you might ask, well, you know, what is the difference? Can we use some things from school? Absolutely, yes. Can we use some um, teaching teaching methodologies from school? Absolutely, with with the way with the way things are going now, and teachers trying to be innovative. Yes, there's a lot of things you can you can pick up from from teachers that you can actually use on on a soccer field. But don't be mistaken, soccer is not school. 
It's nothing like school. It should not be connected to school. And those who continue to, to, to push that message, you're doing more disservice to your, to your young athlete more than you helping them to move forward. What is the big difference there? Well, one, you're using your conscious brain. In school, you have a time to think and process and make decisions. You have a long period of time to learn um, a subject area, and then you're given a test where you can process and you can use your conscious brain. The whole idea of decision makers is to think faster than your conscious brain. So a lot of repetition and time and experience allow you to be at the level when it relates to the technical advancement of the game. I hope that I hope that clarify and make some 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 sense um, to our young players. There's no need for homework, okay? Because homework has gone to um, you know spend thirty minutes doing rainbows, you know. Do do rainbows. What what that have to do with the game of soccer? Maybe ten years ago. If you can do a rainbow, most people look at you as a skillful player because they didn't, they didn't know the difference. So maybe that bit of confidence in doing a rainbow put the fear put fear in the other child, who now, in a <laughs> believe in a perception that rainbow is a is a skill. So they automatically mentally start believing they weren't good enough, and maybe that had something to do with how they they perform. So it's not, you know, we must be able to separate the two things. What is a technique and what is a skill? But we want to deal with the how. You know, when we talk about technique, we must now look at it from a, from a, a different perspective. You know, we must look at it from a different perspective. Um, technique is identifying now as speed. They don't say technique without speed anymore. They, and this is where the game is going. We have first it used to be technique, and then they used then they talk about they spoke about the physical um, aspect of the game. They talk about the tactical aspect of the game, and they talk about the psychological, psychosocial, however you want to put it. Now they're identifying with technical speed, and then they're talking about pure speed which is the physical um, component of the game it's a big separation there why are they talking about technical speed um so so deeply you know you might have some thoughts if you if you if you wish to do so you can you can share it maybe we have um, a discussion um on that gone are the days when you can just you know, you can just know the how. And the how is the technique. And what is the technique? The technique is the ability to do something on a pose. So why are they using the word speed or they're now saying technical execution? So it's important what type of stimulus you create in your, in your practice, in your practices that replicates the game. This is where the, go the game is going. You no longer can deal with the how, just the how. The how is now defined as technical speed or technical execution. It's no longer defined as the ability to do something on a pose. This is where it's going. This is why it cannot be, it, it cannot be school. I also want to... To, to let you understand that um, because I've heard a lot of arguments about players going and, you know, they could do it on their own and they could go to the field and practice on their own. You know, technique is not a, a permissive thing, as most would like to think. It's something now that, like uh, like like, we're, like we, we're talking about where the game is going and you are not. Technique is not a permissive thing, as most of you would like to think or want to, um, to, to share your intellectual, intellectual side. It's not. It's something that needs to be guided. Not instructed, but it needs to be guided. 
You see, instructions, you know, it, 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 you want to demonstrate and demonstrate and demonstrate. So the players start believing they have to do what you do when the game is all situational, but it must be guided. So with a coach who understands, truly understand the process of coaching, because coach is the person, coaching is the process. And the coach must never uh, make himself more important than the process. The process must be in alliance with the athlete. So the job of the coach is, or the, or, or the coach is to create an alliance between the process and the athlete so they can be properly um, equipped to optimize their performances. And the how asks a lot of questions of us. As young players now, the how is asking a lot more questions. There's no lie you could go to the field and dribble around a cone and go to a cone and shoot the ball by yourself and say, wow, I'm a top-class player. Are you not seeing that, you know, at your field? It's a bit more complex now when you talk about when you talk about the how, when you talk about the technique. Remember the technique is the how, right? So don't be don't be confused. When I say how, I'm talking about technique. And I'm I'm trying to establish that the how is no longer just the ability to do something on a pose. It's either clearly uh, replicating the game or it's based on objectives. Hopefully at the end we get that. So it's asking a lot more questions of our, our young people that you see in the struggle and you see in the frustration um, and they're, they're, they're faced with, why am I not moving forward? Because it's it's now connected to, you know, positional profile um, and player, pro player profile, if I could name two. So when you talk about the how, you must be able to connect it one to the player's profile. What are the expectations from the player? Um, and if you go back and when we spoke about the game model, and the, the coach's idea of the game, then when you talk about the how, it must be connected to once it once you establish the, the idea, you establish your, 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 your style, you establish your game model, you establish those things, um, you now have to look at the player profile when you start talking about how. And the positional profile. Because obviously we have players playing in different positions that requires different roles and tasks. So when you speak about technique, you, 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 you need to be a bit more specific in how you approach that. This is clearly where the game is going and where our young players are not going um, because they don't understand. Most players don't even look at games. Most players, I've known female players that don't know that there's an NWSL league in the country. And they're playing. They're playing. They don't know that there's a WPSL league in the country that could pretty much be a pathway for you playing uh, at NWSL. They are boys that play and have this 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 desire to play at a at a higher level and never went to an MLS game. They don't even know where Red Bulls play. So we face with players who are um, not educated. In, in the in the in the components and the characteristics of the game and on top of that they they have parents who are supporting them who want to support them because obviously they love their kids and they um, they want to be behind them but they are also not familiar with the expectations of the game so oftentimes we're moving in a, in a direction blindly 
So that's why you go to the field and the coach and the coaches, you know, the field is set up well. I used to be, I used to be that coach. It had to look good. You know, the cones needed to be at the right space. It had to, it needed the right color. Um, but in all of that, I felt like I needed to understand. I needed to make. Sh- I needed to make sure. I wanted to make sure that the principles of the game was in there. But I clearly understand with time and with learning and with experience and learning from other coaches and learning from instructors and um, you know learning from players. You 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 know learning from people who are totally outside of soccer. But their teaching method and their learning method is one that you can bring into your environment. I I I I I clearly see why the game is struggling here. And if we have 400,000 kids playing and we have 10% doing well, we, we can't we can't say we can't say, well, oh yeah, we're moving in the right direction. No. Now players have to leave with all the resources that we have here. Players still have to leave to seek the opportunities to help the game to stabilize here. Because as a national team progress and, and do well, it, it brings a level of respect to uh, the nation's football or soccer. So the fancy cones and the ladders and the well-organized setup and, you know, and you, you're doing privates and, you know, it looked good. But oftentimes I'm amazed by looking at these things on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And I know it's a way of promoting what you're doing. And you should. If you do if you think you're doing something well and you want to you you want more people to understand that you have the right heart, you have the right desire towards what you're doing when it relates to the how, because most kids go to private sessions because they want to develop their how. The problem is where the game is going, they are not. Because outside of all the ladders and the, and the cones and all of that, there is no content behind it. You know that's that's that begs the question: Are you doing it to create to create the perception that already that is already here, or you're actually doing it because you're doing the right things? And if you're doing the right things, why? There's no content behind it because at the end of the day, if there's no content, you're not guiding, you're instructing. Because if I could only look and 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 um, if I could only look and do what you're doing, then when situation arise in the game, and I cannot do what you're doing, then what will I do? I think the content established, I firmly believe when there's content, it established a principle. And principles allow you to be able to see situations in the game and your brain is able to address it. That is the unconscious competence in which we spoke about in in the other shows. So that's the difference, you know. If I'm if I'm bold enough to uh, put my my dribbling and my passing and my running over cones and and running through ladders and and I, but I'm not willing to share the, con- the the content of why of the why of the when of the where then I'm I'm instructing players and where the game is going with the how. It can be about instruction. It must be, it must be, it must be able to, I must be able to replicate what I'm doing in the game. But, or it must have an objective because sometimes you need to isolate the how um, to make sure that the repetition is there if the, based on where the player is, based on um, the level of the player, the quality of the player. But it still must be an objective. This is why I mentioned that earlier. A 
if you want to put all the cones, you want to put all the ladders, and you want to put all those things, um, you must be clear. You must be able to conceptualize. You must be able to conceptualize um, the expectations and standards. One, you look at the ages and the stages, and you must be able uh, to conceptualize that and, and clearly define why you're doing what you're doing. What are the benefits? If you're not doing that, you are instructing. You're not guiding the how. Again, the how is the technique. But where the how is going, you are not. Because your how is still based, if so, on the ability to do something without opposition. An opposition don't necessarily mean an opponent. Based on what this is why it needs, <laughs> this is why it needs an objective. If it's not, if it's not going to replicate the game, and it can replicate the game without an opponent, based on complexity, based on the quality, based on the ages and stages, based on where the player is, based on so many factors. But if it's only if you're only teaching technique as the ability to do something on a pose and make the players think that they are good or they're technically good, once again, we are riding on perceptions. Okay, coach, so what are you talking about? It's okay. It's a perspective on maybe why you're struggling, why you're still struggling and you're not um, going in the direction that you want to go. Maybe you just, just maybe, maybe what I'm saying you need to pay attention to. It don't make me right, but it's a different perspective. And I've gone around and see. And, and, and see. And then you see it on the field of play where, you know, there's so much breakage within the game, there's no flow. And when there's no flow, it means that mentally there's, there's no connection between player, player, group, and the collective approach. Because oftentimes the ball is off the field. Or the ball is right back to the opposition. So it's just a perspective. Don't be so close minded because of the place it's coming from, maybe, or who it's coming from. Have a growth mindset. Have, uh, you know, ha have a have a space or a place where you can say, you know what? Maybe because I've been doing this all the time, and I, I, I seem just to be off off the ball a bit. I, I'm not. I'm not getting, I have this desire, I'm working hard, I'm training, I'm going to privates, I'm doing all of these things. You know, maybe it's something I want to challenge my coach with. Maybe I want to challenge myself with. Just maybe. Because if you're a central defender, let's say you're a central defender, five or four, you know? And you go to the field and you you shoot in the ball. You're on top of the box shooting the ball for an hour and then you go home. That's clear, that clearly states that you don't understand where the how is going. You going in a totally different direction. Because how many times you as, as a central defender will be on top of the box shooting a ball at goal? How many times in the game? So now, listen, I'm not saying you can't work on your shooting. Because what happens if, if there's a corner or something? Yeah, you need, you need, but if you will, if you're going to spend an hour going to the field, working on your shooting, because a couple of times you got up the field and your shots were poor, and now 
your father or your mother who don't have the understanding, sorry, don't have the understanding of the game and what is required, it's telling your private coach or, or the person who you're paying to do your sessions, okay, I think he needs to do shooting. I think he needs to do shooting. I need to, I think he needs to be better at shooting. Now the private coach just wanted one that little check or he, or he won that money. He'd be like, okay, if that's what you want to do, that's what you will do. But as a central defender, how many times are you going up at, on top of that box to shoot about? And how you get into that box? Are you actually doing the same things that allow you to get on top of that box to shoot the ball? But you say you're working on the technique. So I'm saying to you, that's not where the game is going. And you will be left behind. That's all I'm saying. Because the how must be based, player profile, you know, call it technical speed because player profile, positional profile, which are all connected to the game model, the coach's idea. So I, I am sure when I look at the roles and tasks of a central defender, shooting on top of the box is not one. So why are you spending so much time doing it? Just, just, just some, just, just some perspective. Not saying it's you; it might be a friend. I'm not saying it's you that want to do it, but your parents might want you. The parents might tell the coach, "This is what they want to see," because a lot of times, you know. I could I could I could I could attest to that in terms of talking to coaches and when the players <laughs> when the the when the, the parents bring the child to do you know I, I don't even like to use private session because it should be IDP, not private. Not just the word pri private should not be just thrown out there. It should be an IDP. So what that means, it needs whatever you're doing needs to be connected to what you're doing within your club, what you need to do from a positional standpoint, what you need to do that the coach's idea is there's too many times coaches playing one way and the private coach doing something totally different because he thinks he knows more than the coach. He probably might know more than the coach. But you milkshake in the player's brain because when you tell them to do one thing and when they go to their team and the team saying to do something else, now the child confused. And worse yet, if the child trusts you more than they trust the coach. So where's the development happening? It's very important for me and for what we do at KMSA. When, when kids come here to do IDP, we want to know where you're playing, who is your coach, how your coach wants you to play. We need to get that information. We need to know it because we need we need what every, every coach is right. You can't. It's not good for me to tell a player that your coach is wrong and I am right. If the player is coming to you to do extra work because maybe the coach got three teams and you can't do, you don't have the time to do IDP, you should be an extension of the coach. And if you cannot be the extension of the coach, you must clearly say to the to that player or to that parent, listen, I don't agree with that methodology. I don't agree with the with with the, with the training methodology. So I don't think this will work. It will not benefit your child. Because it's wrong. So, okay. Well, why would I say that? I Well, I could clearly give you an example that I did that with a player. And the parent was totally upset with me. Because I said, it don't make no sense with this. You want the player to do this, but the player don't even know what the coach requires of him. What the club requires of him. What the team requires of him. Yeah, it, it, for some people, it makes them look special. Okay, I'm I'm doing this and, and you're playing better while the child doing everything opposite to what the coach want them to do. So what you creating? What what type of play you creating? An indisciplined player. Because now they're disrespecting the coach 
of the team, regardless of what you say, if he's at a high level, low level, no level, it's still disrespect. You're creating a mentality that will become disrespectful, that will be close to learning. Because guess what? If that child does well and move on to a bigger program where you don't have that influence, where they have to do what the club requires of them, this is where the problem occurs. Because you could only do what you learn. So if you if you're gonna if you're gonna do IDPs, make sure that first there's a clear outline of what. And if you don't have an outline, maybe you need to go out the field with the video, watch the player play, get an idea. If you're coaching, you understand the process, get an idea of what the club is requiring of this player. This is why coaches, high school coaches, club coaches have so much problem with private coaches who 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 do who who are in the field or who are in the field of playing of doing uh, um, individual sessions. Not private. It's supposed to be IDPs, not private sessions. Very important. Um, that we understand that. Please stop taking your children to or your kids or your players to these two-week training when your kid is in a club for six months, three months for a season. They get a break. They come back to win to train one day a week. One day a week. But then you 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 look for a private coach. To, to work with the child for, for two weeks to get him ready for the spring. And nothing is connected. So where is the learning? How you... <laughs> when you understand the how and you, you, you are, you are practicing, you need to be able to take the practice into the game. It needs to... That's why the practice needs to replicate the game. So if you don't know what the club wants to do, what the school wants to do, how they want to approach things, and there's not a respect factor. And if you are a head coach and you cannot do the IDPs and the player decide to go and do IDPs, you should not be taking it personal. What you should do is build a relationship with the coach so he understands what you want to do so that he can work with that. Don't be upset because you might, you might not be getting that extra money. What you might be doing is getting the benefits that sustains your program. So it needs to be a collaboration. There's too much, there's too much wars because some people are scared they lose their player because there's so much treachery in, in, in the thing. So I understand both sides. But I'm saying if the child seeks to do, most kids have to hide and do private, and they better hide. They better hide. Because they might be off the team or they might not play or the coach might see them and be like so why are you doing private with that guy i i do private too but he got three teams and the player playing in his team which he should be doing idps within his team to develop the technique because i'm saying kids go to private sessions to learn the how but the how is not being done correctly so they are moving away from the game more than going where the game is going that is why I say you are going where the game is not. And the game is going where you are not. Because there's no connection. There's no understanding. I want my child to do extra work. So I drop them off. I and 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 what what do you think? Oh, we think, you know, he need, you know, I've been watching at him. He don't run well. He don't he, he needs to work on that and it's what about the coach doing? Let the coach, let the coach do the assessment. Let the coach do the evaluation. Let let the coach decide what you need. But that cannot happen because we have we have trainers, we have instructors. We don't have coaches. If you want to be, if you want to create a, uh, if you want to create some consistency and. Have some stability within your play uh, and help your performance and help your performances so that you can really truly optimize your potential 
and really move on and get opportunities. There's there are a lot, there's so much opportunities out there. Not because you know of the English Premier League and 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 there's so much leagues out there. Not because you're not seeing it on TV. That means it's not good. Some leagues got more crazy fans and more passionate fans than you see on TV. They have so much teams that they have such a commitment to development and performance and they sell them to bigger programs. And some of the bigger programs sell their players to those leagues. So there's a lot to go around. And there's a lot of players here who uh, aspire to be at that level. They walk around like they're already on that pathway. Excuse me. So if you if you want to do that and you don't want the system to impede on your progress, stay tuned. Because when I come back, I will share three key things I believe that if you pay attention to, it might just help you get on that pathway. It's going to take some time. But if you have the commitment and, and, and you have the support behind you, then maybe, just maybe, you can change that. We'll be right back. Even though he's giving support to this poll, he's also in a position to close the space when possession is lost, but also... Six is able to drop in so that the pass that initially was going in there, the six can intercept. Okay? Now, if the nine try to play behind and the 11 try to play, now the five is in a good position to stop penetration in between the lines. So by doing this, by getting compact and staying compact, you stifle the opportunities of the opposition to get behind you. Welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. You with Kayo Day here. Um, we are about to bring the curtains down, and I promise you I will give you three things that I believe um, can truly help you. But um, based on what you saw there just now, we talk about content, we were just focusing on a functional group in terms of if you lose the ball within the defensive third, as, as we say, some people don't believe in defensive third and they have a good argument. Um, I know one, one, one colleague who, you know, he argue hard with the thirds of the field and it's a fun argument. It's a fun argument. So, but my perspective is I believe in the different thirds of the field. So in the defensive third, what you saw was a functional exercise with a back four plus the goalkeeper and the six when playing out the back if you lose the ball. So the positioning, the positioning of the players with um, within when they're in possession is preparing them to defend, what we call ready to defend. So if you see the, the, the group separated. Um, if you look at the entire in in the in, in the video in its entirety, you will see how that line was able to connect to the next unit and the next unit. So if you didn't understand and you saw just one group and the rest of the uh, the the magnets on the rest of the board, um, that part of the video was just dealing with that functional group. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, three things. Three things. If you want to go where the game is going. Um, then from a technical standpoint, we talk about the how and the definition of the how and what is defined by now and not just by the ability to do things on a pose, but more um, with the idea of replicating the game, one, and, and um, two, from an objective standpoint, you have to be object, you have to have objectives and you have to be able to conceptualize that uh, based on what is the principle you're teaching. Um, and it can come from a positional standpoint or a player's profile standpoint, which ties in to the game model, the idea of the coach and, and, and the style. How What is the style of play, if that makes sense to you? 
So one, stay away from unrealistic technical practice. Do not take part in practices that it's unrealistic to the game. And if you're a young coach, um, maybe you're responsible for the the, the, the grassroots program, which, which is the number one thing right now, grassroots program. You should try your best to stay away from unrealistic technical practice. If you cannot put it in the game, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay? That is one. Coaches who understand might have an argument, which leads me to my second point. So don't, don't, don't hang me yet. Don't hang me yet. Yes? It must be, if you're going to do um, technical practices, the how and where, based on where the game is going, conceptualize your objectives, your goals, not your goals yet, okay, your objectives, and what tactical principles you might be teaching from a basic standpoint or a complex standpoint within your exercises. So if it's not going to replicate the game, then you have to be clear about these objectives. And it must be conceptualized and based on, again, the tactical principle that you want to teach. The tactical principle might be um, to break the lines. You must be able to conceptualize those two things based on the exercise that you're doing. And if I walk up to you and ask you, how is it going to be used in the game? You must know uh, the team's game model. Or they, you must know what, what, the expectation, what the expectations are. Or the expectation of the player. And it must be in respect to the player profile. Or the player's position. So if you're thinking about doing some extra work and you want to go to work with a coach, um, not don't just work with the coach because you like him or like her. That plays a part too because everybody wants comfort. They don't want to be uncomfortable. I'm not going to knock you with that. It's your choice. But make sure these things, these things are part of what you're doing. How are they going to do it? It's up to their skill and their ability to do that. But what I'm talking about is some principal things. I'm not talking about exercise. I'm not talking about drills. I'm talking about principles and how they utilize the principles uh, to bring it to life for you to see it and for you to choose to be at that level. It's their skill. Finally, set goals. And not just set goals, but make sure those goals can have objective data behind it. That tells me where you are, where you were, where you are, and what you need to do to get to the ultimate. So if the coach is walking around telling you, well, you're doing better, you know, you're doing good, you're doing, you know, you're doing fantastic, you know, from last week to this week, you're, you're good, you're perfect. Okay. That keeps you away from where the game is going. That keeps you. I guarantee you, if you, there's a lot more things. You know, the more highly qualified coaches and the more skilled coaches um, can bring a lot more to the table, a lot more in terms of your, in terms of from a technical standpoint. But I believe this is a, I believe it's a good foundation. If you, if you, if you start with these three things, you, you can be getting closer to the matrix of high performers. You can be getting closer to them. If you do it on a consistent basis and you don't want the quick fix and you don't want to do it for a month and then say, well, you should get better. You should be inspired with learning and not success. 
once you put success before the learning process, you neglect the ability to grow. So it's important that you put the learning ahead of the success. And as you learn, it actually brings success. But the learning process needs time. That's why you go to school for four years and then you go to college for four years and still come out and be an intern because you're still learning. And that is problem solving. What about the skill that desire you to lose or to go faster than your conscious brain? How you expect to get, how do you expect to receive success when you think it should come? You're doing a disservice to yourself. And if your supporting cast requires that more than they requires learn, require learning, they're also doing the same thing to you. I want to thank you for, for staying with me. My goal was to do it before an hour. But, you know, I'm not doing it for me. It's important that somebody can go back to this. If you haven't shared, please do so. So that they can, you know. Hello, Sian. Hey, how you doing, boss? Good to see you. Hope all is well with you and the family. So, yes, make sure that you share it. So that they can at least get the rebroadcast. Because a lot of kids have the a lot of kids have talent. I've seen there's so many players here with talent, young players, girls, boys, so much talent. We should be producing more. It might just it might not just be here, it might be all around. And if you know, coaches are very few. Coaches are very few. Just did, just had somebody send some some things to me. It's three percent. Over 80,000 coach, 3% are with the A license, which says that you are competent when it relates to developing young people for the elite game. I'm not an A license, don't mean that you're a good coach. Please don't say, well, you have to get A to be a good coach. Just, no, you have to do the work. <laughs> you have to continue to learn. You have to be committed to your own growth. But it says to me, who's really working with these kids? And the, play, the coaches who are working with the players, who are you accountable to? So where's the learning happening? If you're not learning, because you don't have to account, you have no, you, 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 you don't have to show no accountability to no one. You're not learning, so you the kid, the player can only do what they're learning. So what are they learning from you? If you don't see it necessary. To desire feedback. I have about six or seven coaches that give me feedback and challenge me all the time. But I love it because all it does for me is help me to grow and help me to be better in the thing that I love. Why would I, why would I, why would I stay away from that? Because they might say something that makes me uncomfortable or challenge my methods. That is fantastic. That is the best thing that can happen to me as a coach. For, for someone to say, hey, did you look at it this way? What was the thinking behind this? Why did you choose to do this exercise so long or so short? Like that is, that is I don't know why coaches run away from that. I know because the ego is bigger than the purpose. But if your purpose is what truly gets you or keeps you in this game, your ego could never be your ego could never be that big. You will love feedback. You will desire it. So keep in mind that three percent. So if you go to your private coach tomorrow, I hope he's in that three percent. And if he's not, please make sure he can he can he can answer these questions. Because if he's not, or if he can, if he can't, and he's not, then you are not going in the direction where the game is going. Stay blessed. Um, and have an awesome 
awesome, awesome evening. Thanks for coming through, Alicia. I hope all is well. Um, we still have, we still have uh, the the tights and stuff that you can use to work out. Mr. Christopher Matthias, awesome, sir. I hope all is well. Um, I hope that you are looking forward. You are looking forward to continuing to help Guyana and our young people um, in some in some in some capacity. But good to see you. Thanks for coming on, and, and hopefully you can share you can share this uh, to our young people so that they can maybe they take something out of it and keep moving forward um, because. We just sometimes just need a different perspective. And let me remind you, don't make me right. I am not here to try to be right. Because everybody's right in their own eyes. It's just a different perspective. They say if you keep doing one thing over and over and it presents the same result, maybe uh, there might be a little insanity in you. So it's good to have a different perspective. So please don't say that I, I think I'm right and I'm, I believe no. Every coach is right. If the coach, if the coach helps you to get to the highest level and, and it's, it's working, fantastic. This is styles make fight. Styles make fight. All I'm saying, if you are the one struggling, okay, if it's not you, the friend behind you or the friend to the side of you or the friend that lives close to you, he might just need or she might just need this perspective and it could probably help them. So share, share the live. And subscribe to the channel, Kyrie McKinnon and Co. So you can get more content or reach out and ask questions that we can, you know, we can do our best to inform you on a different part. Have a good night and thanks for being with me. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun, so why not name it Rex? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.